how trying to become a millionaire is not going to work. There's a great deal of talk of becoming a millionaire. There's a great deal of talk of becoming a billionaire. And it's all 100% off base. And what I mean by that is one doesn't try to become a millionaire. One doesn't try to become a billionaire. Typically, these are things that are byproducts of massive activity. If Let's go back to Fred Trump, father of Donald Trump. He did so much that there was no way he could not become rich. And one of the problems that I'm seeing, and we're going to really discuss a lot of things with wealth building, starting businesses, and the truth about money. And we're going to get a little racist here. Okay, I'm going to get very racist here. I say that because anytime you talk about race, you are a racist. So typically, it is extremely challenging for white people who are the majority population in this country to become millionaires. Now, why I'm saying this racist is because there are many people who have some really preconceived notions about that group of people when they're the largest group of people. They're the largest group of people who have poverty. They're the largest group of people who have unwed mothers. All of social ills that impact virtually every other group impact them the greatest, but for some reason it's not talked about. But in terms of becoming a millionaire, it's very, very hard for members of that group to make it. Even though that group represents more millionaires than other group, there is this fallacy in the thought process. Now, if it's hard for the dominant group to get rich. What about the other groups? I was having this conversation with a South American immigrant yesterday, and we we're just talking about money and he explained what he did. He came from South America 24 years ago when it was much easier to immigrate to the United States than it is now. So he moves here. But the thing is, he doesn't move here. He's broke. He's not broke. He has money. He moves here on a Tour, he, he visits on the tourist visa, then he it goes to the embassy, changes up the visa, says he comes in on an investor visa. If you are an immigrant and you want to move to the United States of America, you got a million bucks and you say, hey, I'm going to hear, move here and start a business, approved just like that. Approved, 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 like that drive time commercial, approved, approved, approved. The United States of America is a capitalistic society. It's a capitalistic instrument. It's a capitalistic organ. Nism. And many people who are struggling refuse to accept that is the core of America. Now, going back to the South African immigrant, he comes here with money. He opens, he goes to the bank. He has no, you know, and he told me, he said, when he moved here, you got a social security card back then, but it had stamped on it, um, not for work. So he had a social security card. He had a, you know, social security number, goes to the bank. Uh, he puts ten thousand dollars in and says, "Look, I want to do a collateralized loan." They do, they do the loan within six months. He has a credit profile in America, not an American citizen, but he has a credit profile. Business accounts, business accounts were much much easier to open back then. You just walk in with your business license or your articles or a corporation, boom, you're done. So he did all that. Now here's the thing: he is not an American citizen. He is not going through the naturalization process. And he has been here legally for 23 years. He employs people. He has this business, you know, and he's living the American dream. He is living the American dream. And the reason is he started a business that made him a millionaire through service. This is the thing. And this is something that uh, really plagues those of us who are online entrepreneurs. Now, you can make a lot of money as an online entrepreneur, but typically the thought process is to do less with more, to do millions with not a lot of staff. And that has become not just an option, but almost a mandate, right? Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just going ahead to explain how somebody who was not born in this country, who was peering from the outside in, came in, started the business, 
uh, created millions of dollars of income, uh, living the American dream, and doesn't have a degree. The reason is service, 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 service. You got to serve a lot of people. Uh, my act of service here is doing these live streams because if you come to Hustlers Kung Fu and you sit and you pay attention and more importantly, you take action, you're going to make money. You're going to make money. That That's just, it is. You know, stuff I'm telling you today, if you listen and then take it in, you are going to make that damn money. But the thing is, chasing a million dollars or chasing billionaire status with no super arcing uh, super arc of service, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Just sitting there like, you know, laws of attraction. I am going to become a millionaire. I'm going to, nah, chances are pretty slim. You know, you might luck into the lottery or something, but typically the people who become really wealthy tend to serve. That is just a truism that I've seen over and over again outside of winning the lottery, outside of inheritance, outside of some extraordinary event. Typically, the people who build businesses, who make millions of dollars, tend to serve a lot of people very well. And a lot of people don't get that because, you know, one of the reasons I changed the format of this channel is I had a lot of hustler porn guys. And I was like, okay, you drew these yard puppies. What did you do? Was it your messaging? And what's your messaging? You got to change your message. You got to change how you talk to people. So the group is changing now. But typically, you know, going to the South American immigrant, and I know a few other immigrants who did the same thing, and I'm going to talk about why that they work so hard. They understand what the United States of America is, which is a capitalistic organism. And when I say organism, it is it breathes capitalism, it bleeds capitalism. And everybody that tries to do things that are counter to capitalism tend to fail, tend to not have money. Uh, this recent election, you know, people are going white lash. People are going, uh, folks are sick of Obama. The capitalists got in the office. And essentially, I just want you to think of this presidential administration and cabinet as not one fox in the hen house, but think of the foxes went and took the hen house and moved it to their den. There, they, there, it's just, I mean, the stuff that I'm looking at, and I understand it because many people are going, give him a chance. This is one of the greatest acts of pimping I have ever seen because he ain't lying. He ain't hiding shit. It's just like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what we're going to do. And it works because the United States of America is a capitalistic organism. That's why all this stuff is going to work. And part of your success is building products, services, whatever, that serve a lot of people. You want to begin serving as many people as possible. You want to make a million dollars? Find 100,000 people to serve you will be insured to make millions if you find 100,000 people to serve on a higher level. This is what the South African understood and what many Mexicans and a lot of people who are considered Mexicans are actually from El Salvador, uh, Guatemala. A lot of Mexicans who are doing well in Mexico or have no interest in coming to the United States of America. If you ever travel, and I would say if you have kids, get passports and go to some other countries while they're young go to some other countries so you know when you see and feel the reality versus what you you're, you've heard because most of our news and opinions and stuff are shaped by social media now fake news is a shaper of opinion propaganda there's so much stuff that many people don't have a three point or four point vetting source of news they don't so it's very easy. I saw two people fighting about a lie on Facebook this morning. They were going back and forth, and the whole thing was fake. And they were going back up because they believed it to be real. And with speaking of real, let's get with you know the South African immigrant, Mexican, you know, people I've known throughout my years. I have a very 
strong level of respect for someone that leaves their family, comes to another country, and are you know will always be considered a foreigner. If you have an accent and you're you're in the United States of America, I don't care where you go, you will always be considered a foreigner. Like if I were to move to France, I would be considered a foreigner forever. I don't care how well my French became. That's just how it is. People are like that around the world. So to do all of that, come here and understand what you can do. And I was talking to the South African guy. You can't do what he did here in South Africa. You can't do it. There are so many countries that you cannot just say, I'm going to start an LLC today. I'm going to go downtown and get a business license. Something that you can do within a week or, or maybe a day. You can't do this in other countries. Also, there isn't the culture of rule of law and there isn't the buyer base. They're just, I mean, our poor people have more disposable income and I know it doesn't feel like it because when you're catching hell, you're struggling to pay your bills. It doesn't feel like you have a lot of disposable income, but our poor have more disposable income than other countries' middle class. Now, that's a big, big part of how this thing works. You can have the best ideal in the world, right? You can have great products, but if you don't have anybody to sell them to, or they don't have money, you know, um, here's another thing, like, you know, being racist again, because I looked this up and don't just take my words, check it out. I often wonder why certain societies evolved to higher levels of technology than others, because there are certain societies and communities around the planet that are still hunters, gatherers. There still are, and I'm just like, why? You know, you go to the Aborigine in Australia, you go to certain places in Africa, people are still living off the land, they're still hunting the cheetah. I'm like, why did this happen? Now, the racist thing, because um, it's not eugenics, I forget what the name of the study is, but typically people say that these people are living like this because they have low IQs. And that's not the truth. Scientifically, this is the big difference why some cultures evolved and other cultures didn't. Two things, domesticated plants and domesticated animals, beast of burden. So if you were in a geographic area where those things didn't exist, you didn't evolve as fast as places, as people who did. Because we all know in the scientific fact that they just found some new footprints in Africa uh, in the same area they found Lucy, life started in Africa, scientific fact. And in Europe, life came after, but Europeans, because of domesticated plants, beast of burden, evolved faster. Asian people, China, Japan, domesticated plants, beast of burden. And also, if you know about the, at one point, all of these, these communities, or I should say land masses, were connected. And then as time went on erosion and the oceans rise then we became disconnected so that's why certain communities evolve if you take an aborigine out of the desert because it's a fucking desert and send them to school they do well so it's not an intellect thing it is a natural resource thing now where i go through this whole point of explaining that if you are brilliant and you are in a country where people don't have money you're brilliant, you've got this product where they can't afford it, you're not going to get rich. It's just not going to happen because the environment doesn't lend itself. The United States of America, followed by Japan, China, certain parts of South America, the UK, there's these environments where people have free time and excess money to buy stuff. And that's why everyone tries to sell these countries all their stuff. We can't do it. I have seen a Mexican who worked for me in five years come to this country legally and within five years built up a business and he comes to the warehouse because he no longer works for me and he's in an F-250 dually. At the time, these were $50,000. If you know anything about Mexicans, they don't do a lot of credit. This dude, from coming to this country to starting his home repair business, was able to have enough money to go pay cash for a dually, two fifty. No, oh, it's a three hundred and fifty. Cash, fifty thousand dollar vehicle, pay cash for it. Five years. You have students here, kids here, who 
have been born here who are still living with their parents. So that's a big reason. They understand what's available here. So the whole part of this is if you're like sitting back and coming from a position of entitlement that I'm an American, I should be middle class, I should, uh, no, 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 no. You have the opportunity to be rich, it's just for you to flesh it out. Michelle, they deal with the government help. I'm gonna disagree since I know immigrants. Here's the thing, and that's something that a lot of people like to say. Typically when an immigrant comes here, um, there's a lot of shit that happens. Uh, you know, this recent election has had people whipped up into a frenzy. Okay, so what do we know about the government? Because uh, Michelle, I'm gonna challenge this with information that you know. How efficient is the government at really doing anything other than starting wars? So this inefficient government is going to take this person who doesn't speak the language, put them through a program and they're gonna become a millionaire. I'm not buying it. Typically, they work hard, and this is just personal experience, myopic as that may be, they work harder. They have drive. I've, I don't know, I've had immigrants work for me who were sending all their checks home back to their people. They were working for something much bigger than themselves. And that's a big key. And many of these corporate loophole tax loopholes require companies to actually have a presence in those countries and making money overseas. People need to learn how to make money in their area first. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of money to be made here. There's plenty of money. You know, the, the opportunity is just looked upon so differently because I think being an immigrant is a huge bonus because you know what it's like. You know what waits for you if you don't do your best. Whereas in America, I mean, many of our homeless are on the streets because they have drug problems, they have bad relationships with their family, they have alcohol dependency. There, there's some other stuff. I mean, as a former homeless person, I wasn't homeless for months and months, but I saw that, you know, people talking to their fucking selves, walking down the street talking to themselves. A lot of these people are really sick and they don't have the family structure to take care of them. Um, Patches 301, I met a guy from Peru, told me that he was saving 50K, he returned to his home after five years and lived like a king. In some of these countries, two grand a year will buy you a place with maids and a butler and a gardener. It, it's amazing. So typically, uh, there's a lot of people who look at folks who do well as if they had some additional help. Uh, they, you know, it's like, you know, going back to the, the government helps them. Now, the government does help American companies bring over foreign talent with the H something, the HBB, whatever visa. That is a government program that helps a lot of big companies. You know, you don't have a uh, Pookie's uh, barbecue joint on the corner bringing the kid over from India with a mathematics degree. That's Intel, that's Apple, that's Google, that's, uh, you know, the certain banks. That's who's doing that. That's not the regular Main Street business. Those are big corporate, national, international businesses who are bringing these people in, extracting their intellectual capital and getting richer. It's not you, it's not, well, actually, I've kind of done a little bit of that. But, so it gets real interesting. Listening from bed last night up to after four hours of sleep. <laughs> Made a product this week, cool. Congratulations. But what I'm saying here is, you know, for the folks who are caught up on the, I'm gonna become a millionaire, I'm gonna do this stuff, especially online, it's very possible for you to do information products and make a lot of money very fast. As I was discussing with a client last night who makes a lot of money, who's very good on the income tip, but there is virtually no wealth. Now, this is the danger. You know, why trying to become a, a millionaire will not work. If you're only making high income, the minute that income stops, you're screwed. Many people, I have this uh, saying, I learned from, uh, you know, an emergency room one night, uh, Troy, Dr. Troy said it, luxuries, ta once tasted, it become necessities, right? And it always stuck with me. So you have this entertainer, basketball player, entrepreneur, online entrepreneur, who's making gobs and gobs of money, right? It becomes a habit and they become unfit to do something else. 
they become unfit to do something else. So when the ball drops, because, you know, I was saying, you know, it, all platforms change. How you make money is impacted by these changes. Like, you know, me doing uh, YouTube. I made a ton of money from sending traffic off of YouTube. YouTube's like, no, 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 no. We don't like you no more. No, no, you send traffic off. We say, fuck you. I mean, that's really what it is. So fortunately for me, I never like live crazy. So when the income went down, I was able to weather the storm. And this is something that a lot of business owners, a lot of immigrants understand because they've gone through really harsh times. Like take someone who comes from a war torn country. Uh, they saw their loved one have their head blown off <clears throat> or they saw <clears throat> family members dragged to prison for simply being a different religion. And they come to the United States and they have a cranky customer. When you compare and contrast that, they're like, no problem, we'll fix it. Because they just have deeper experiences. A lot of Americans have become weak, and, weak as fuck, extremely weak. And it's going to be very, very hard for those people as we go forward. Nurses are being recruited from the Philippines. They've always done that game. I used to wonder why there were so many Filipino nurses for nursing agencies. That, that has, that's been a cultural thing. Um, good point for bringing it up, Patches 301, because in the Philippines, if you make $750 per month, $500 to $750, that's upper middle class income. You make $2,000 a month in the Philippines, you are balling. So a lot of people in these countries, when they saw paths of prosperity, paths of wealth, they went around like, hey, Jolene, become a nurse. Uh, son too, become a nurse, become a nurse, go to America, make lots of money. They work like that because these opportunities weren't as rich in their country. So the internet's changing everything. The internet's making opportunities literally around the world. But once again, if in your country, you don't have people who can pay for your services, regardless how good you are, you can't make that money. Ronnie, I told you I feel like a crackhead waiting for a hit when I get another no when I get that notification. I don't get that notification from you at night. That's hilarious. Uh rise and grind, D Row, Filipinos are, are high sought out in every country. Uh King Flip, yep, yep, we got too much nice shit. I mean, all right, let, let's talk about this. Let's say you're poor as shit. Let's define poor as shit. You don't have a lot of money. You may be living with your parents or your grandparents, but you got a cell phone. You, you got an iPhone. You got some Jordans. You got cable or Netflix. You eat out, but you're poor. Poor in other countries is the distended belly of the child that hasn't had a food in two weeks. Uh, poor in other countries is you get kicked out, like in Dubai. You don't pay your rent. You know what they do? They turn off your access to the elevator and they turn off your access to the air. So your ass has, they don't, you, you got to walk up 50, 80 flights of stairs to a hot ass apartment. They make it very uncomfortable for you. And the government's on their side. You can't do shit like that in America. So I'm not, you know, because many people get really, really mad at me when I bring this up because it's like this person is struggling at their own level. But from an international standpoint, you ain't fucking struggling. And that's why you are not really going to be successful. And that's why you're not going to make millions of dollars because you don't know how to successfully weather dips and struggle because at the first sign of a hardship, you're like, I'm out. Fuck that. I'm going to watch Netflix. Netflix and chill. Or I'm going to go around here to my other equally broke friend who just managed to scrape up enough money for a blunt, and we're going to hit this blunt. Or we're going to watch this television. Or we're going to go out and on the four-wheel and rip circles in mud. Income and your wages are totally different. Oh, big time. King Flip, I was in Jamaica a couple months ago. They laughed at ideas of working eight-hour a day. 16-hour days is light work for them. Uh, if you know the history of Jamaica, there was a lot. That's where they had a lot of bloody slave revolts. And that's why they have a lot of their mannerisms. They know. I mean, it's just a real different country. Isn't there a danger for you getting a large chunk of your money from a small audience? How do you guard against? Well, we, we, we ain't talking about that. We're talking about how to become a millionaire and serving a lot of people. Who says small audience? I said at the beginning of this,
to become a, becoming a millionaire is a byproduct of serving a lot of people. I don't know where small audience came from. Uh, let's see, Irvin, me and my friends are thinking about doing this street sweeper business, Glenn. No, I'm thinking about it. Just do it. That's, you're going to get more information by doing it or, or getting it started. Uh, Punk877, the house and the projects is a condo in Africa. For real. It, it, he ain't lying. But see, this is something else, too. Many of us as Americans have preconceived notions that even when presented with evidence that they're wrong, we'll cling to those notions because they make us feel comfortable and happy about ourselves. I have traveled around the world. I have seen real poverty, real poverty up front and close. And I tell people that and that's like, ah, whatever, man. Whatever, man. My sister's a big part of poverty. Yes, it is. Uh, Benjamin, I stay in one of my shops right now, Glenn, and I feel like shit, but now I know what I want. Is that a bad thing? Well, okay. Uh, many people who have made it, because this is this is one of the big things. Um, if you're willing to sleep in your shop to build an asset, you're on your way to wealth because a lot of people won't do that. Comfort is the death of success for many people. Many people have to be comfortable. Let's uh, like these long streams. I get a lot of people who complain. They're too long. I don't want to watch them. Fine. I'm going to keep doing them because for the people who take this information in, they're going to make some damn money. They're going to make some money. They take these lessons and apply them in real life. But the folks who are looking for comfort, uh, the people who are looking to be educated through inter-edumacainment, whatever the hell it is, that they have to be educated to be entertained. If you have to be educated, entertained to be educated, then the cat who doesn't need all that, who's willing to be educated, even if it's hard, is going to financially kick your ass. You just sorry. I mean, I went to, when I was in school, I didn't finish. I went to the University of Sherman. I, um, my classmates were Asian, J Japanese, Filipinos. Those motherfuckers put in work. It ain't like it's it's just like shit. This is hard. Ronnie Coons, do you have a course uh course ways to make money in part online part time if you're already in a full time job? Let's talk about this online thing. Okay, here's the problem with making money online. You can make a lot of money online, but it usually takes time. You can go through the platform of using Amazon or eBay and make a lot of money part time online. If you want to do what I call full digital citizenship, it's going to be difficult because here's the first thing you have to do. You have to have your product or service and you have to find an audience. You got to find an audience. You got to get to know the audience. You got to create some form and then you got to develop trust. Now, all of this stuff can be done every day. Thousands of people are doing this, maybe millions. I don't know. There's no the database, but the thing is, it usually takes way more time than you think it's going to take. So, I mean, just get started. You know, as for courses, I have 30 days to 2,500 best course to teach people to make money. Because here's the problem. You got a job, right? You work eight hours. You factor in commute time and other stuff. You really work 12, 10 hours to 12. Then you come home, you got regular chores and, you know, how many hours you sleep. So there's not a lot of time for building something. And most people, if they don't get overarching results, they just quit. I've learned that from teaching courses. Uh, it, it's, it's just wild. And it, for a good start, I would recommend Never Broke Action Pack because it's going to help you make the most of the money you already have, which is real important, really important. A lot of people overlook that. Moonlighter, hanging out with goal-driven and action-oriented people, you find yourself doing the same. Yes. And another reason that immigrants do well is the community supports them. No one says, Pedro, you started a landscaping business? No, man, go get the job. They're like, Pedro, throw a party. Saturday, we barbecue in the pig. My place. Pedro has started a business. Pedro is living the American dream. That's how I've seen this shit. You see it on Facebook. Here's the meme. I can go in there right now and put on there like, hey, I'm no longer running my own business. I just got this wonderful job. It'll be congratulations out the ass. Hey, I just started this new business. A few people are like, cool, man. So you, you're right. You're right. 
hanging out with goal driven and action oriented people, you find yourself doing the same big thing, big, big thing. Uh, then LOL, Section 8 does have money no matter where it's from. It does. I don't mess with that stuff, but yeah, it does. King Flip, the irony is if people get got their shit together, this country would be vastly different. Unambitious people are a necessity. Pimp or be pimped. That's all I'm going to say on that. I mean, you got people, uh, the poor people in this country have always been pawns. They've always been used by both political parties because they're the largest group of people in the country. Poor people are the largest fucking demographic in this country. And a lot of people just like don't want to say that because if you could say, hey, I have a degree, I'm middle class, even though I'm living in the basement of my parents' house, I can't pay my student loan debt, my car is falling apart, and I haven't got pussy since pussy had me, but I'm middle class because I have a degree, it makes you feel a little bit comfortable versus looking in the mirror and going, damn, I'm broke. I'm broke, and my parents are about to retire, and their income's about to be fixed, and they told me I got to get the fuck out unless I start paying some rent. It's just reality, man. Reality. Dominic Z, you need an audience for money online. It's hard, but possible. Yeah. What's up, Shalise? People who don't like to struggle with this concept because they think online business is isolation. Yep. Keon, can you explain 55% tax rate for symbol? No. Uh, we're talking about how to how, you know, trying to become a millionaire. One of the things I do with these streams to keep them more congruent, congruent and keep them on point is we don't go into these vectors of talking about something totally different. A job or you insane. I was just putting that up there. Now, another thing is if you sit down, and this is why when you hear this guy he'll or, or this woman, they'll come on and they'll talk about, I wasn't trying to become a millionaire. I just wanted to create the best surfboard in the world. I just wanted to create the best cookies in the world. See, those are service my service mindsets. A million dollar income or millionaire status is a byproduct of service minded mindsets. And now when you start going up the food chain, when you get into hedge funds, when you get into these companies with billions of dollars and they go buy this company that's already serving people, they make it more efficient, they get rid of the fat, they sell it, they make more money. That's a whole different game. But for most of us, if you in your life can start a business from scratch, get it up to an annual income of you know, revenues of over seven figures, you've done well in life. And there are many people who, due to the, the billionaire status thing of, you know, you know, in the world, there's only like 2,500 billionaires. You know that, right? In a world of 7 billion people, there's like maybe 2,500. You, I mean, it's not even, it ain't even the top 1%. You have to include people who make 330,000. If you just lumped all the billionaires together, they would own a lot of shit, but from a population standpoint, they're not even a they're not even a fraction of the population. They really aren't. So just chasing that number without really understanding what is totally involved is just crazy. Uh, to one Osborne, yes, Glendon, I don't want my sons to fall in the trap. That's up to him. That's why I appreciate your perspective. I mean just to start something like that and also it changes the family tree when you have a business owner who brings certain things in uh let's use trump none of his kids have jobs they all work for the family business donald trump he's never had a job he worked in the family business so the the youngest one he's going to work in the family business maybe and there's another one she seems to be a wild child she's doing her own thing on instagram but what happens is and this is another thing why a lot of people cannot become wealthy is they have no support. Typically, when I talk to people, I talk to customers, everybody's like the fucking Lone Ranger. They don't even have Tonto. Reference, Google it. They're just doing it all by themselves. Um, they're really hustling and they really, and there's a lot of loneliness and isolation because they can't really talk about what they're doing with their friends because they are the unicorn in the bunch. So, there's another thing. It takes a lot of mental strength to really push forward in that kind of environment. How much to start a business like Snapchat 
Mm, I think they took on like two or three million to get started and took on more money. I think their total investment was like 40 million, something like that. Multiple stream of income, your thoughts? Do it, but get your anchor income down first because this is what, where most people go wrong with that. They'll try to have 10 streams of income going on and they'll start all 10 at the same time. And it's so fragmented that they're really not making any money, yet they're working their asses off. People need to talk about success and winning the trap is avoiding the conversation. Tribalism, which is a big reason that most people will not become millionaires. And just to be clear, you don't have to become a millionaire to have a great life in America. You get to an income of 330000 you learn how these tax laws work. You could be taking four or five trips a year, sending your kids to college, and be stacking probably eight figures in retirement money. So you don't have to become, quote, the millionaire. But if you do want to become a millionaire, you have to understand millions of dollars are byproducts of millions of acts of service or a few hundred thousand or, you know, depending upon your price point. No, he's talking about trying to start something like it. Obama is making his kids work at restaurants. What do you think about that? Uh, that is a very unique situation. His kids are the president or the, are the kids of us of us president. You know how rare that club is at any one time. There's only five or six presidents, ex former presidents living. That is extremely different circumstance. And I, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Unless these girls become crackheads, their, their path to prosperity is assured. When he comes to the office, he's going to make millions of dollars in whatever thing he pursues because he's still relatively young. Their path is assured. He's just trying to shape them and make them better people. I mean, this, this is a totally – his kids working in restaurants versus um, Sammy – and Joanna's kids in the hood working in a restaurant, they're working to shape character. They're working to help pay the rent. This is this ain't even the same conversation. Totally different perspective there. Yeah, I think, you know, a little bit of shell too, because uh, like Trump and uh, actually, I, what's her name? She's in the cabinet with Obama. She, her family's worth $26 billion. Her family's got more money than like 26 times more money than Trump. And she's in the Obama cabinet. The, another thing of, about, you know, building a business that serves a lot of people that makes millions of dollars is you get up into that upper in those inner circles because money by itself is good, but money connections and power is better. And that's why you see all of these rich people up in the cabinet because it's a proximity. You're, you, you could have, let's say Bob in Iowa is a great controller. Bob is wonderful. Bob is a financial savant, but Bob makes 80 grand a year. He lives, he knows nobody. Very few people know that he's a savant. He would probably be the best financial chair in the government we could ever have, but no one's going, Bob's never going to get that job because Bob's not connected. Even though he has the skills, he's not getting that job. So that, that's another reason is connections, exposure, influence. Irvin, one day you'll own an apartment complex and you'll teach me how to buy one when you buy one. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Let me just go ahead and tell you my plan because what are we talking here? Trying to become a millionaire through acts of service. Now, one of my issues with online, you know, I have issues, I have a lot of issues with making money online i just don't talk about it, is we're, this is all getting controlled now and it's going to get worse the good days of the free internet are over so you're going to have to start positioning yourself and you're going to have to have money to make money online because organic reach is just going to be so hard to get in the next decade we're, we're moving there it, it just drives me crazy Um, I see her as a future president, Michelle Obama. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it. Uh, Lars D. Adams, my grandfather had three great, third grade education, had three successful businesses. The last business was a tree service. He employed all of our family. That's a beautiful thing, Lawrence. That's a beautiful thing. 
I had a friend. Well, I, he's still a friend. I hadn't seen him in a while. He had a metal fabrication shop, and he was doing seven figures when I when we were in the same office park. Of course, I'm sure he's probably doing eight figures a year. He employed his brother, his cousin. Not not only did he employ them, he brought them in the shop. He taught them how to weld. He taught them how to do. He had his own vocational school in that shop. And these guys were making 70, 80 G's a year. That's how you get ahead in America. Right there. That right there. What Lawrence said. And if you don't have a business and you're not doing that stuff, you can't fucking employ family. Shalise build a foundation first. Yes. How do you build a foundation for your business before you get too far going? I don't understand that. Generational wealth is a beautiful thing. What should be the foundation? First thing should be you should learn how to manage your money. One of the quickest ways to get wealthy is not to lose money. Most people lose money because they don't manage their money and they blow everything they have. Do this. Start walking around with four or $500 cash in your wallet at all times and you can't spend it. Mentally condition yourself to hold on to money. A lot of people cannot hold on to money like... Um, very soon there'll be tax season and you'll have what I call the, um, what does it call the earned income credit wealthy, you know, people getting 6,000 up to 15 grand, one lump sum. Uh, you'll see it on Facebook, getting my nails, hair done, all of this stuff. You, you'll just, Hey, got a new car. And it's just going to be this period of financial prosperity. I should say, fake as financial prosperity is I have a problem with the earned income credit because it comes from social security. So you have people who are getting more money out of the system than they're putting in. Things can't last like that. So you, you have this thing and they will, they will literally blow that money in a matter of weeks, a matter of weeks. So part of the problem is there is no models for you like let's go to lawrence because i love that story i have a feeling that all of the people in lawrence families are different because they have seen the power of a business this business put food on the table this business paid for clothing this business paid mortgages this business paid for cars so there are a lot of people who are really afraid of the responsibility of a business but the big thing is if you want a million dollars you got to serve a lot of people you got to serve a bunch of people and many people are trying to shortchange or circumvent that process. Oh man, Lawrence is man, your grandmother and grandfather were just on it. My grandmother worked at a law office and got the big contracts for grandfather's tree service. Now, with that, that's what's happening with this administration. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna laugh. I think Trump's gonna get impeached. Uh, massive conflict of interest. Uh, it's just going to be some, it's probably going to be some small shit that's going to trip him up because typically this is how America worked. Grandmother's working in a law firm. You got to have a agent somewhere to bring you certain things. You got to have an agent. Like uh, one of the reasons I shut down my office furniture business was I didn't have any connections. I had to cold call my ass off cold call my ass off to get in and i'm competing with people who lived in the neighborhoods of the decision makers i'm glendon nice presentation good on the phone that's bill my neighbor who you think's getting the business who you think's getting the business i saw that time and time i asked one person i was like okay i came in with the best price what happened and the girl's like well my boss came in and I was supposed to make the decision, but one of his neighbors sold furniture and they talked about it and the deal was done over a dinner. That's America. And if you're not in that position to be in those neighborhoods, then you can't be around the decision makers. Kind of like, see, Lawrence, Lawrence grandfather, grandmother and grandfather was on it. They realized how the game worked and they got in and made it happen. Grandma went to the law firm. She got exposed. She knew what was happening. She filtered those jobs to her husband. That's called teamwork. That's called getting wealthy together. 
and here's another reason that a lot of people aren't going to be rich is this thing of selfishness and not selfishness and not serving people, but selfish selfishness in their personal lives. Many people are trying to do this stuff by themselves. I've said time and time again, when I had the, the upscale garage sale, the resale business, I had a partner from day one. I didn't do that shit by myself. No, I didn't do it. And then I did this thing by myself for a while, but for me to go to the next levels, I'm going to need a team of about six or seven people. That's going to be what's required. But once again, a lot of people are so selfish that they're not really doing the things they need to do. What's up, Amit? I find myself in meetings with CFOs buying products they don't want to play nice. What do you mean by that? Typically, when you get a meeting that's 50% of the deal, and a lot of people don't know that. Uh, one of my sales mentors, he, he taught me, there's uh, 33 and a third of the business you'll get from just showing up. There's uh, 33 and a third of the business that's the neighbor, next door neighbor, the brother-in-law, the wife, whatever. And there's a 33 and a third percent of business that if your sales skills are on point, you know how to handle objections, you can get it. So fully, you can get damn near 70% of the business that you go after if you are on point. Now, I got a lot of business, but I also got wore the fuck out. I was working 80 hours a week, 90 hours a week. That's why when people talk about like I never sleep, I don't work half as hard doing this as I did at all storage business uh, nor the storage auction business I don't work half the hours so that's another thing about building a business you get a better work ethic so you're like you know it, it kind of surprises me that people think I'm working that hard well, really I'm not uh, grind matter grind over matter TV you have any advice on scaling a small video production business I'm one guy that does the sales, shoots, edit. Sometimes I hire freelancers for wedding projects. Help. You need to go ahead and hire somebody now. You, you've, you've done what's, what I call is infrastructure cap. Your business can get no bigger than it really is without hiring someone. You've gone as far as you can go. It's pretty much it. You are, you are done with that. And that's why a lot of businesses just don't really grow because they're afraid of hiring people or if they hire people, they don't develop management skills. That, that's a big thing that you're going to have to do to grow your business to the level that you want. So while trying to become a millionaire, well, no, it just isn't. And I see this. It's like I'll see people with their vision boards on Facebook and all of this stuff and all of these, um, memes but not a business plan not a product no sales funnel nothing but i'm going to become a millionaire a billionaire because i want it it's not gonna happen all right so king flip and grind over matter hey y'all hook up i, I want to cut all right oh that's not what i need I'm getting ready to do something. All right, for those of you, because I'm getting ready to bounce, for those of you who want to get into the Never Broke Action Pack, it expires tonight, 11.59 p.m. Jump that. It's going to help you fix your credit. It's going to help you learn how to make more money. And more importantly, it's going to give you a better mindset about money, what it is, what it isn't, and how to improve your financial situation. It is currently $149, and what you will do will be a thousand times greater than what you spent. Many people have loved it and there you will love it too. Uh, let's see, that's a good question. Are the grandparents still with you? To one Osborne, I need sales skills. I have a good rapport with people, but I need, need sales skills help. 30 days to 2,500. What I'm gonna do for you people, hold on a second before I bounce. Uh, typically live streams, you can access these links and stuff for maybe 15, 30 minutes. I'm not sure. After I do this, so you, you want it, you better jump on it because it's going to disappear very quickly. Uh, let me, I'm going to do something kind of crazy. 
All right, let's see. For you people who are here, this won't last long. It's like normally 2,500. I'm gonna put this down for 699.99. This is 27 courses. It's a lot of stuff. You get it. It's completely. It's a rooker, a rookie's beginning business university, and this will include the never broke action pack if you want it. So, 700 bucks. I am putting it here. Uh, that was a good. That was a good upbringing, Lawrence. I can't tell you how uh, fortunate you are. That is a. That's amazing. That's some really good stuff right there. Because most people don't have that. They just really don't. And also, you know, a credit to you. A lot of folks don't have the appreciation to recognize what your your grandparents did for y'all. A lot of people be like, ah, you know, I did this. So you know, they'd be like, Biff. That is really good, Lawrence. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. And that's something else, too. By starting a business and you have kids, it was really interesting. It was in this Asian restaurant, and this guy had his son, who appeared to be six, taking the cash. He knew how to operate the restaurant. He knew everything. It was, uh, it was a beautiful thing, and I was just so impressed. Because that kid's getting a serious education in how to talk to people, how to run the business. That that's just um, and it's a lot of pictures. Well, let's see why that populates. Kerm, Diane, I got the Never Broke Action Pack. Cool. Shalise, your honest, your grandparents left you a beautiful legacy. I I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I, I wish there were more people who had stories like that. I really do because. That right there is the thing that changes families, that sets the family on a better path, that creates generational wealth. And generational wealth isn't just money. It's uh, intellectual capital. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, Keenan, the people in this chat are amazing. Glad I found this channel this week. Glendon, great stuff, man. Welcome to the family. See, that this is one of the reasons um, I've changed stuff around because this has been the hope and the dream is to get people who you know like, like when these folks are like hey let's hook up let's network let's start doing some stuff that's how shit happens not just sitting and taking the information not doing anything with it which is what a lot of people do so kudos to y'all all right y'all keep networking once again for those who want the never broke action pack that offer expires 11 59 p.m tonight and for those who want more, this is a live stream only special for folks who are on the stream. 27 courses, 700 bucks. You grab that. So with that, y'all keep networking and I am out. Oh, before I leave, be sure to subscribe, like, and share these videos with people you care about so you can help them come up.